Hey, welcome back to Golden Blue today, everybody. If you are a college football fan, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. That is all we do here every single day. And don't forget to send gear to represent your team and yourself to be a part of my background forever. All you have to do is send your gear to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina 29657. It can be a pennant, a cup, a t-shirt, a jersey, a sign, or my favorite, a mini helmet. West Virginia fans, we, we might have a real dilemma that we're having to deal with right now. Of course, we know Neil Brown not really having as much success as, as we were hoping, and he's got off to an 0-2 start, including a loss at home, Kansas, in overtime. That didn't go well with the fans at all, and a lot of chatter about firing Neil Brown has really heated up, including myself. I understand both sides of the aisle. You want to give them time, and that's a lot of money for the buyout. But but then the ladder goes up from there because Shane Lyons came out with his press conference or a statement, whatever you want to call it, and and backed up Neil Brown like he he's you know rough start, but he's the coach for the future. He's going to turn it around. Blah blah blah. Shane Lyons is not going to fire Neil Brown, and so West Virginia fans aren't happy with Shane Lyons either. The the athletic director for West Virginia. But here, here's where things get a little bit sticky. Not only is he the athletic director of West Virginia, but he's also part of the NCAA Transformation Committee. And of course, they talked about splitting off from the NCAA as far as FBS goes. And actually, the vast majority of athletic directors said, no, we do not want to split off from the NCAA. So it looks like FBS is going to stay under the NCAA, but... They want more of a streamlined effect. They want more guidelines, not just punishments for, oh, th this is wrong for you, and but they can get away with it, you know, stuff like that. And, and we see that a lot, favoritism. That has to go away. But they did show a vote of confidence for the NCAA itself. Now, here's where the, the situation gets a little bit tricky. Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, is actually the head of the Transformation Committee, and he backed up Shane Lyons, and he gave a list of things that the NCAA needs to work on, but that overall the FBS is going to stay under the NCAA. I have no problem with that. The reason why this is tricky for West Virginia, what I just mentioned, Neil Brown not doing well, Shane Lyons is behind him 100%, not going to fire him. And it seems like that's our connection with the SEC. What, what, what do I mean by that? Well, Greg Sankey is the head of the Transformation Committee. Shane Lyons is a member of the Transformation Committee. And we've heard in the past whenever conference realignment talk was really, really hot you know, who was the next teams that the SEC was going to bring in? And we all know about a decade ago, it was between Texas A&M and either West Virginia or Missouri. West Virginia almost got the invite, but ESPN stepped in and said, no, 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 no. We want the Kansas City TV market, so give us Missouri. So the SEC went with Missouri. And then, of course, last year we found out that Oklahoma and Texas are headed to the SEC. Now, what I've heard beyond that is... The next four, of course, the ACC teams, Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, and Virginia. But the ACC grant of rights have not been figured out, not even close. There is no loophole other than straight-up disintegration. They'd have to get enough votes to, to disintegrate the conference itself, and then that's when the grant of rights would go away. But it looks like that's not going to happen. Honestly, most teams are happy in the ACC. They just want more money. And it looks like ESPN is willing to talk with the ACC to renegotiate that because if they can't get those four brands, then they want to keep the ACC intact and make as much money as possible. So they're willing to renegotiate. So it looks like the ACC will exist at least until 2036 unless they renegotiate to 2029. And I've heard that as well. That deal is on the table as far as redoing the TV deal, but only making it up till 2029. I don't know how that affects the grant of rights. I don't think it does. They would probably have to renegotiate that again up until 2036. So maybe they're trying to split it up, figure out how much money they make off of this until 2029, and then they'll have a ballpark figure of how much they can do the next TV deal up until 2036. I don't know. That's just guessing. So it looks like the ACC is off the table. And from what I've heard, the next four teams that are beyond Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina, and Virginia are Miami, Virginia Tech, but those two are in the ACC, so if the first four are off the table, then those two are off the table. But in with that group is Oklahoma State and West Virginia. So if the ACC is off the table, then West Virginia and Oklahoma State would be bumped from the next four in to the first four in. So a relationship between Shane Lyons, the athletic director of West Virginia, and Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, seems to be pretty tight. 
And maybe the SEC is thinking, like, thinking hard, like, for real thinking of bringing West Virginia and Oklahoma State. So if we fire Shane Lyons, does that go away? You see the dilemma that West Virginia is in? Do we put up with Shane Lyons and Neil Brown and, and a couple more losing seasons or mediocre seasons, 6-6, six and 7-5, six, and five, whatever, if the reward is getting to the SEC? Or are we wanting to fire them right now and bring in a better name like a Hugh Freeze or a Tom Herman? There's many names that I come up with. In fact, I did a list on potential coaches that West Virginia should at least pursue. Are we wanting that right now, but at the expense of maybe not getting an invite to the SEC? See, that that's a real back and forth dilemma that that's probably going to be discussed and probably is being discussed okay do we want to keep Shane Lyons and Neil Brown have a couple of so-so seasons but we're getting invited to the SEC so that's a big reward or we want to win now West Virginia is better than what we're seeing so it's time to do away with Shane Lyons and Neil Brown uh, if we don't get to go to the SEC hey at least we're in the Big 12 I don't know which one is better honestly maybe it would be better I mean because if you really think about it if you really think about it maybe Neil Brown can turn it around he needs to he's got to get away from the analytics and the percentages especially I mean fourth and six at the backyard brawl if we go for it right then and there and we make it we can bleed probably a good three minutes and even a field goal that's a 10 point lead with about three minutes left in the game I mean, that's close, not exactly, but close to icing the game right there. And boom, our season is looking completely different. I think we play much better against Kansas if we beat Pitt in the backyard brawl. I think we actually beat Kansas if we beat Pitt in the backyard brawl. That was kind of deja vu of what happened last year. Played a good game against Oklahoma, but came a little bit short. And then we came out flat against Texas Tech and lost to Texas Tech. We shouldn't have lost to Texas Tech last year in Morgantown, but it happened. And it seemed like this year, deja vu, we played a good game against Pitt, but came just short of beating Pitt, and then we lose to Kansas back in Morgantown. It makes no sense. So maybe we can finish strong like we did last year. I mean, we did finish strong last year and we got to a bowl, but 6-6, six and six, I'm not liking that at all. I think 8-4, and four, which means we can only lose two more games the rest of the year, and West Virginia actually has the number one strength of schedule remaining. Whenever I saw this, I was like, oh man, this, this is not good. I didn't realize West Virginia had the toughest remaining schedule out of all the Power 5 teams. So we have to deal with that. Is that possible? Is it possible to go 8-4? and four? And are we willing to potentially do away with a bid to the SEC by getting rid of Shane Lyons, ergo getting rid of Neil Brown? But maybe Neil Brown can turn it around. And you are saving a lot of money. I mean, I know his buyout does go down to $16.5 after this year, but that's still a lot of money for West Virginia. The only thing is the ticket sales might suffer. Let's say 10,000 fans, and I got this from Kuz's Corner, by the way. Let's say 10,000 fans decide, hey, We've had enough with this. We're not showing up to the games. Let's say the average ticket price is $75, some or more than that, but we'll stick with $75. That's $750,000 per game. That adds up over the length of a season. But if we were to head to the SEC, that would make up more than what we would lose in ticket sales. This is a real dilemma right here. Honestly, if this were my decision to make, I would keep Shane Lyons in ties with the SEC of potentially getting a bid of the SEC or an invite to the SEC, whatever you want to call it. I know that means keeping Neil Brown because Neil Brown is his guy, but you're keeping that connection and you're keeping having to swallow $16.5 million even after this year. So it's not all that bad, although I don't like losing. That's the one thing that I don't like about this situation. I don't like losing, but you are saving a lot of money and you're keeping the SEC connection. I don't know, guys. Y'all let me know in the comments section, what do you think West Virginia should do? Do you think that they should fire Shane Lyons, resulting in firing Neil Brown and going after a big name coach immediately? say a Hugh Freeze or a Tom Herman or do we keep Shane Lyons and Neil Brown and keep the SEC connection with Greg Sankey and look towards the future in the SEC. That's all I got for for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you on my next show.